Right. Are we looking good yet? Okay, apologies for that. Uh, we had a, a slight technical difficulty there. Um, glad to see that you are all still with us. Um, right, my name is Charles McCowan. Um, I'm here today to provide the Net Company Global Tech Talk. Um, and the topic that I chose for today was uh, SQL performance and tuning. Um, the reason I picked this uh, topic, um, I really believe it's something that uh, you can apply in almost every project that you will work. Um, and um, I also find that it's actually quite a rewarding, um, it's a rewarding task to actually take on, um, seeing small improvements and some of them even large um, on the projects that you might work. Um, so I'm going to uh, dive into the agenda now. Um, I'm going to do a quick introduction. Um, from there, we're also unfortunately going to have a little bit of theory. Um, I'm going to keep it quite lightweight. Um, I don't want to lose any of you guys on that one. Um, also, we have some non-technical listeners, so we won't be deep diving today. Um, I'm going to touch base on a couple tool sets, uh, namely SQL Profiler and the SQL Query Analyzer. So basically, can we see what's going wrong in a system and then how do we actually look at uh, resolving the problems? Um, and then we're going to touch base also on the dynamic, no, dynamic management views and the database tuning advisors. Um, and then we will end the session uh, with a Q&A. Um, as I go through the presentation, um, if you would like to ask some questions, please feel free to. Um, I will be checking the chat um, as we go through. Um, so there might be a little bit of a delay between you asking a question and me uh, returning uh, or giving you a response on it. So uh, please just be patient with me. OK. So um, as I said, I am Charles McCown. Um, I am a senior specialist here at the company. Uh, I'm currently 36 years old. Um, I, I'm still very new to Net Company. I've only been working with them for three months. Um, however, in those three months, I have had a, uh, I, I feel like I've had a good impact. Um, I've also managed to work on a number of different projects. Um, I've picked up on a few new technologies um, because they, they have such a wide variety on their projects here. Um, so the learning, uh, from the learning aspect, it's, uh, it's been a great introduction to the company. Um, the company really embraces digital transformation. Um, they, they work on multi-technologies, as I said, across a huge amount of projects. Um, and the methodology that they use across the projects is consistent. And with that, it actually enables us to keep on track and deliver quality consistently to the clients. Um, my background is I have a Bachelor in Computing. Um, I completed it at Monash University whilst here in South Africa. Um, and since then, I've mostly been working on c -sharp and .NET stack applications. Uh, with almost 100% uh, SQL Server backend, so uh, hence the topic. Um, as part of my work, I always like to focus on quality and performance throughout our code stack, um, and again, that's that's what leads into this topic. Um, as far as it goes for SQL Server performance, um, I think uh, if if you're a developer, there will always be some time uh, at some point you will get an email or a task will come across your desk. And it will be around there's an issue with the system and its performance, um, and you will need to have a look into it. Um, in some cases, somebody might be able to actually tell you exactly where the problems are, uh, but there's a good chance that basically you'll be sh you know, you'll be looking in the dark here. Um, and this is where some of these tool sets might actually come come into use and help you point you in the right direction. Um, much of what we're going to be going through today, um, I'm actually going to be using uh, my local SQL uh, SQL Express. Um, I'm not going to be use the full-blown uh, SQL Server just to show you that you actually don't need a full-blown server just to actually use these tool sets um, and that a lot of the features that you're actually looking for are available on the free version. Um, so as far as SQL goes, um, the engine that sits behind uh, SQL Server um, basically also comes with an optimizer. And basically this optimizer will analyze the queries that are run, um, the tables that they are accessing, the number of rows that may be in those tables, um, the indexes and the data statistics that are linked to that. And basically it comes to the most effective way to actually find that data for you. Um, from this, it's able to build plans in the background um, and basically cache these for future use. So um, I don't know if you've ever noticed that when you run a SQL query, uh, let's say it takes five seconds the first time you run it, uh, next couple of times you run it, it actually improves itself. And this is actually the optimizer working in the background, helping you to make your queries a little bit faster. Um, if you want to actually think about it, um, imagine um, Google Maps. When you say you want to um, go from one place to another, Google Maps actually takes a whole bunch of information altogether and will find you the most effective way to get from A to B. And you can actually think of the optimizer and the data statistics that it builds doing exactly the same, just trying to help you get to the data that you're looking for. 
Um, so one of the things that we need to actually think about also is, um, is that when we build a system from scratch, quite often what you'll do is you'll find that the performance is perfect. Uh, well, we hope so. Um, but over time, you know, sometimes drastically or sometimes slowly, you'll actually introduce um, performance issues. Just gradually, but surely, but slowly, you know, that, that system gets a little bit slower. Um, what may have worked perfectly is, uh, is now no longer, and it is something that actually um, is going to need a little bit of looking into. Um, but before we get into that, a little bit of theory. So as far as it goes, you need to have a little bit of knowledge, um, specifically around indexes. Um, and indexes are basically there to assist us find data in our tables. Um, you can basically uh, use the analogy of an index in a book. Basically, if you want to get to chapter seven, you go to the index and it tells you to go to a very specific page. Um, we're going to basically use the same analogies while I go through the next three terms. Um, which are really valuable when you actually want to start analyzing performance issues. Um, those three terms are the scan, the seek, and the row lookup. Um, as far as the scan goes, um, this is where each row in a table, so I mean, you can imagine the rows of data that are sitting in that table, and you basically scan every single row. So if I exactly gave you a book, for instance, and I said start at page zero, and I want you to go to chapter seven, you would literally go page by page all the way through until you found chapter seven. Now, quite honestly, that's highly inefficient um, and time consuming. And if a computer was doing this, it's a waste of resources. Um, there are two ways that the scans can occur. This can occur on a table. So I have two very simple examples there where we have a person table. Um, the first one is uh, where we actually are supposedly using an index. So you would expect that the ID of a person would be indexed to give us a quick lookup. So say, I want ID with one and you get Charles McCowan back or whatnot. But in this case, we're actually specifying ID greater than 5,000. At this point, you know, SQL is going to do its best and say, well, I know where record 5,000 is, but as far as the data you're looking for, I really can't help you with that. And basically, it causes a scan because SQL, in the end, cannot actually tell us how many rows we are looking for. Um, and again, let's perform the scan. Same thing with the second one. This is where basically we are doing a wildcard search for somebody with the name Foo. And basically, there's no index on it. Again, SQL is just going to go, there's the table, take all the data, scan it. Um, oops, uh, as far as the seek goes, um, this is where we actually are hitting an index. Um, and we are getting an exact row or a few rows that are uh, going to be evaluated. This is where basically the optimizer has an index. So basically, you go to the index and you say, I'm looking for chapter 7, and it will take you straight to page 68. Um, in our case, where I go select name from person, where ID is one, it gives me the exact lookup to that record. Then the last term that we have is a row lookup. Now this goes together with a scan and a seek. Um, and this is where basically an index can give you uh, a lookup record. So basically I am searching by person type one, which may have an index, but I'm also searching for the name on that table. And that name isn't part of the index. It actually will need to say, I have the index, I know where to get the data, but I will need to go to that record in the database table and actually grab that information. And that's where you get your lookup from. All right, uh, that's the, fortunately, that's all the theory we're actually gonna go through for today. But um, I see we haven't got any questions so far, so that's a, that's a good start. All right. So we're gonna, we're gonna jump into our, uh, our first utility, um, and that is SQL Server Profiler. Um, and basically, what we use this for is we need to have a look and say, what is actually happening in our database? Um, the thing is, when you're working on a production system, and there are thousands of queries or executions that are happening in a, on a, you know, every second, it, it can be very difficult to pinpoint where a problem actually, actually exists. Um, and this is where SQL Profiler can actually come, come in handy. Um, what's also, what is also good about uh, SQL Profiler is, um, you know, it will also tell you what's happening on a SQL instance, not just on your database. So what I like to call as a noisy neighbor is sometimes the problem that actually exists is not with your database. You may just be negatively impacted because another database is actually using all the resources on the server. Um, again, SQL Profiler will actually assist you in finding these issues. Um, I, I will put it out there that when we run the profiler or when you run it for the first time, it can be a little disheartening. Um, it reports on a lot of information. Um, and like I say, when you've got thousands of requests coming in every second, uh, it's going to be streaming a ton of data at you. Um, this is where I'm going to show you where you can actually then start filtering these uh, results um, and um, basically fine-tuning what you're looking for. 
Um, and basically then you can start pinpointing either what's the application that's causing the problem or what are the queries that maybe you need to have a look at. Um, and basically the attention that needs to be paid here is how much CPU is being used um, and the disk I.O. or the reads that are occurring by that query because basically they'll give you an indication of possibly where the problems are lying. Um, one of the other things that maybe you also will need to take into consideration um, is also the, um, the number of execution counts that actually occur. I mean, you may in your profile find that there's a very, very slow query, but it only runs once a day, whereas you have another one that runs just a little bit faster, but it runs every single second. You would probably want to actually look at that one that's more commonly used. All right. Um, the, there, is, there are some downsides to using SQL Server Profiler. Um, the very first one is that it does affect server performance. Um, it's, like I say, it, it is now basically um, intercepting every single call that is occurring inside the SQL engine and basically having to report on that. Um, so, you know, you do need to run it sparingly and don't leave it running for too long. Um, also, it is useless if you're trying to investigate a problem that is occurring. If that problem stops, basically SQL Profiler isn't going to help you. Uh, there are other ways that you could possibly look into finding that problem that was occurring, but as I say, SQL Profiler will be only running on live data. Um, it also does require very specific roles on the server to be to be run, so unless you have those types of roles, you probably would need to get somebody from your ops team uh, involved in uh, assisting you to actually run this. Um, like I said, there are some other alternatives, so in the case where maybe you don't have the time to contact ops or um, set up a profile in time, if you maybe want to take a very quick snapshot, um, there is a query that I have uh, I have stored to memory, and it is called sphoo2 there on the page, um, and that gives you a very, very quick snapshot of all the queries that currently are either sitting idle or active, and are they causing locks, what are their CPU usages, and um, or what are their reads like. Um, like I said, it gives you a very, very quick view if you're just having to look a quick snapshot to see if, you know, are you the problem in the system. Okay. Uh, without waiting too much more on that, and uh, give you too much information on the SQL Profiler, I think we should give it a demo. So, let me just open the SQL Profiler. Um, in SQL Server Management Studio, if you go under Tools, you'll find that that's where you'll find the link to SQL uh, Profiler. So, what we need to do, basically, is we are going to start a new trace. I'm going to point it at my local host, and up it comes. So, we can give our trace a name, so we will call it Ed Company Tech Talk. Um, it's pointing at our local server. Uh, there are a number of templates that uh, the trace can use. Basically, this defines what columns or events you're going to be looking for. Um, for this time, I'm going to just use tuning, but basically, if you take your time and you go through it yourself, if you just load up a trace with one of these templates and go and run it, you'll actually see the columns and, and whatnot will be changing. We're going to be going for tuning. Um, if you need to, so say you want to actually have a look and see what was actually running at this profile later today or something, you can actually save it to file. You can also save it to your table. And also, if you don't want to sit here watching it, but you need to run the profile for 10 minutes, you also have the option to enable the trace stop time, which means it will actually run for a duration. Okay, as far as this goes, there's a second tab here where we can also customize our trace. We can actually uh, set which events we want to look for and maybe even which columns we're looking for. Um, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'll show you the events, but basically this is more for uh, a very advanced user if you're looking for very specific events to actually occur. But in our case, we're honestly just looking for what SQL is running in our, in our current uh, situation. Um, and uh, what I want to do is maybe just show you how we can add um, maybe an extra couple columns to this. Um, so application name is very good because that will actually, as long as it's set up on your connection strings, will tell you exactly who is calling your database. Um, I'd like to see what the CPU usage is like. Um, let's carry on. Uh, I'd like to see if there's an NT username against it. So is it actually being run by, by somebody on, uh, on the domain? Um, and then let's also look at reads. Reads is also really important because this normally, this normally links back to how much actual uh, database, uh, sorry, hard drive access is there that's running. So in a query that maybe, maybe has to read a lot of records, so one of those scans we were talking about, you're most likely going to find there will be a high amount of reads that are sitting in there. There are quite a number of extra columns and whatnot, but I think for today, that's going to give us as much as we need to know. Um, one of the things, as I said, the SQL profiler is extremely noisy. Anything that runs inside the engine basically will be reporting to here. So not only the SQL rerun, everything that is internally as well. So one of the things I like to do 
is I like to run some filters on this as well, which is where we can actually just fine tune the data down, just filter out some of the noise that we're not actually interested in. One of the ones I always go for, I mean, you can actually, you can, if you wanted to, you could limit it by application name or only by a database. Um, but at this point in time, because we're running this on our local host, you don't, can't expect actually too much traffic. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to limit it by my duration. Um, and basically I'm going to say anything, uh, anything greater than one millisecond is fine. Um, there is an organized column, so in the case where you're not happy with your, the order in which the columns are showing, you may, you may adjust them as well. But for the meantime, I think this is all right. So the trace is starting. I believe the font size is all right. Okay, I am just going to mimic a little bit of traffic for us. So I'll run some queries. And we can see that there is some noise coming up on our profile, which is great. And basically, we can have a look at this. And basically, well, the nice thing about this is it actually even prints out basically the SQL that we were running. So I can even have a look in here and I can say, okay, there was some query on some email address information. Uh, I can see there was a query with a comment table expression, some joins, and that's select top one. And uh, there was also a person lookup. Now, if I scroll over and I have a look at some of these results, I get the duration, so the time that it, it took to execute these. Uh, I can see the actual database it's looking at, so you can see it's an AdventureWorks database. Now I can actually see, ah, it was me that was running it, that's good. Uh, we have a CPU time, and then like I said, we have this very important section, which is the reads, which actually can tell us basically what is actually happening in the background, and is there something maybe that we need to look for. And like I said, you need to kind of balance this between maybe what's happening in the CPU and what's also happening on the reads. And the one thing I notice here is considering how simple this query looks, it's got a very, very high read on this on this query. So this is maybe something that we would actually want to look at. So I'm going to save this query, and uh, we are now going to jump back to the presentation. Okay. So this takes us on to the next part of, uh, of the presentation. And this is where we're going to start now using the Query Analyzer, which is also part of uh, SQL Server Management Studio. Um, so once we have a profiler um, and we've hopefully found something that doesn't look right, uh, this is where we can actually now then start using the Query Analyzer um, and maybe start having a, a play as actually getting this fixed. Um, one of the things that uh, uh, we do need to use is, um, is, is to get the breakdown of how the SQL Server actually interprets a query um, and then how it executes it, because as we see it, we might think, like I said, this query looks very simple. It was just a, it was just a person being looked up, but for some reason, SQL Server was taking its time and and reading a lot from that database table to actually get that information for me. Um, so what we can do is in this an, uh, query analyzer is we can get the further information. So we can actually go and see maybe how many rows are being returned, you know, before this record was actually found, or what part of the query is at fault here. Um, the one thing that also is really, really a, a great part of this query analyzer is it's not just used for looking at how did how did uh, the SQL engine actually interpret our query. It's also used that you can actually have a go at doing pre and post changes to query. So you can actually test your query against it and say, okay, did did the change that I apply actually work, um, or did I make it worse? Um, and this is a really, really great way of actually ensuring that the changes you're making are actually for the good. All right. Still seeing no questions, which is good. Um, I'm going to then jump across to SQL Query Analyzer. So let's, let's jump into SSMS. Okay. Uh, we know we were on the AdventureWorks database table. Uh, we're going to open a window. And I did save that query. Now to open up the Query Analyzer, basically there is a little icon just over here, including the actual query, uh, actual execution plan. All you need to do is press F5. In your results it's on here, you'll see the actual results and the messages, and there's an additional tab, a tab called Execution Plan. If we actually click on it immediately, you know, let me just increase this for you, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a bit small. We can immediately see that there is a scan that has been performed. Now, if we go back to our theory, the scans were the probably the least likely, uh, or the the, the least wanted uh, type of scan, uh, type of uh, read that we wanted. Um, and in this case, I mean, it doesn't look so bad, but it's 0 0.011 seconds. Um, 
And if you'll actually notice, in the query execution plan, it's actually even giving us a recommendation about an index. So what it's picked up is saying, I executed this query, I had to scan the data to get it, but if you actually included an index, and it actually provides me saying, if you put an index on last name on this person table, which is actually funny enough, the field we were searching by, it believes we'll get a 99.8% improvement in our query. Now, I mean, that's, that's no small number, nothing to laugh at, but um, what we can do is we can actually then go and test this and actually see. So the one thing I just want to do is, uh, I just want to put 0 .1, sorry, 0 0.011 seconds, um, just as a baseline that we can use to actually see if there was actually change when we, when we make this index that they're suggesting. I go to the person table and I have a look, I see that they actually currently do have a number of indexes on this table, but I would believe that they have no covering index on this last name. So what we can very quickly do is we can open up the new index window and basically let us create an index. I'm going to go with a very common index name, so person and let's just put last name in. What you'll see here is there's two additional tabs down here, so your index column and your included column. So the in, there's two differences here that need to be noted. The index key column is basically used for the fields that you will want to be searching by. And the included column is, if I wanted to search by last name and maybe include first name, that will actually provide the data on the index for me to search rather than me doing what was, remember was called a lookup, where if I find it in the index, do I still need to go to the table to get that data? But let's just take it one step at a time. And let's first say, let's add our last name as an index. Let's say okay. This will now in the background have created our index. We go back to our query and we re-execute it. Let's go back to our execution plan and we actually have now noticed that we have an index seek and a key lookup which is actually kind of sounds very familiar to what we were talking about in the theory is that we now have an index in place which is now finding that record for Salivaria uh, but what's happening is we are searching for first name and first name is actually being looked up on the person table, and that is why we're getting two two records here, uh, well, two items in the in the in the execution plan. So I would say the next step that we could possibly do is if we go back to our index, let's edit it. We go to our included columns. Uh, we go to our included columns and we say, let's add our first name to it, say okay. So basically we're going to use last name as our lookup field, and we're going to include first name on the index, and hopefully this will actually cause just a seek and there will be no lookup on the table. Let's say okay, it will apply the index and rebuild it. And if we run the query one more time, yeah, it's good when a demo works. We have an index seek, only a seek. And if you'll notice the time duration that it actually took to run was zero point, it actually doesn't even measure the milliseconds it gives that. So that already is a great a great increase in performance that we actually received from such a simple query. Now, I mean, it may only have been a few milliseconds, but like I say, at the end of the day, when you have live systems that are running thousands and thousands of queries, you know, we're, we're, we're driving towards a, you know, a, a green environment, you know, keep our servers running as, you know, as, as low and as quiet as possible. Um, we basically, uh, this is the type of scenario that we're looking for. We're trying to find the best performance that we can out of our queries. Um, now I saw I've got two questions here about indexing. Uh, can you decrease the performance of other queries run on the server by creating a new index? You can. So this is where it's very, you've got to very, be very careful. So as, I, um, as we saw in the query analyzer there, it actually recommended um, indexes. I always say you need to take this with a pinch of salt because at the end of the day, you have the knowledge on how your schema is put together. Um, when you have, let's say, say I already had an index on first name and now I'm going to index on last name and then later I want to index on, I believe there was a, a middle name column. SQL is only going to pick up that you are querying by last name or querying by middle name. And the way it's going to say, I know how to make this query better is apply an index. I mean, it's going to try its best to be as accurate as possible and give you the best index, but it's not going to take the full picture into consideration. And this is where you've got to take the right approach and say, okay, I can actually see I've already got an index on last name, but actually now I want to actually query by first name. So you would actually want to maybe make a, a covering index across two of those fields. Now, that's where you need to actually be careful is go and have a look and see what maybe what indexes already maybe exist on this table. Because immediately once you actually start then 
playing with different indexes, um, you can get some conflicts. Or SQL is actually not sure which index to use. And then that's actually where problems can actually come arise, that it actually may pick the wrong index. And again, that will negatively impact one of your queries. Um, any downsides or reasons not to add indices like this? Um, I'm not entirely sure um, what you're asking. Um, there, so there are downsides. Let's let's actually start with that. So there are downsides to adding indexes. Um, indexes do cause overhead. So um, in the case where um, you add too many indexes, when you actually start updating and inserting records. If you think about it as, a, as, a, as there is a book, if I start adding new pages and new words or chapters into a book, somebody's got to keep going back and updating the indexes. And if there's one index, that's fine. You just go and update one index. But the more indexes that you actually have on your table, the bigger the impact it's going to be. You've got more indexes that you've actually got to go and have updated. And those require being rebuilt. And on a live system, that, that you know, if there's lots of updates, that can, that can have uh, some severe downsides. Um, yes, so the query, the query plan is actually different. Um, so before I, um, I didn't include the first name in the included columns, basically what was happening is it was hitting the index uh, with a seek, um, but to get the actual first name column, it was having to do a lookup onto the table once we actually included it in the include column. Yes, the downside might be that the index is just slightly larger. Again, there's a bit of overhead that now if, say, first name has to be updated, and the index is actually associated to it will need to be updated. Um, at the end of the day, this is something that again, it's it, it's going to come down to actually having to test because you you know you could say let's not do that including column um, and sacrifice the performance we get with our queries, um, or is it you know do we take that and say we don't actually have that many updates coming into our table? We do more we do more queries than we do updates. I think you've got to you've got to try and balance it out like that. I think if it's more updates occurring. Then try and reduce the number of indexes you have because you're only going to you're only going to be running into um, a lot of overhead when that happens. Um, I hope maybe that that answered your question. All right, um, I did mention that um, not only for checking query plans or actually using um, indexes, um, this tool can be used. Um, I also mentioned that. Um, we can use this to actually start testing changes in our SQL. So sometimes you might maybe open up a store procedure or a function and you take a look at it and you're saying, you know what, I think I could maybe write this a little bit better, but you know, how do you actually go and test that? How do you prove that maybe that your query is actually more efficient than others? Um, so what I wanted to do is I, I thought maybe we would just do another quick, quick test on the person table where maybe I could just show you um, even something maybe very simple that we could actually pick up um, which um, I actually find on, on a number of the, of the projects that uh, I've worked on in my, in my, in my history of projects. Um, so let's just start with a um, person dot person. Let's just do a top 10. Oof. Always people watching makes my typing go bad. Um, so what we can do is, yeah, let's just work with a, a date. This is quite actually a common issue. So we can say where per dot modified date. Um, so what I want to do basically is a, is a date comparison. Um, and I'll explain what the problem will occur here. Um, let's say somebody is telling us, I want you to go through all the person records and I want you to find, I see these are old dates. So let's say um, we want to archive some people from this table. Um, please tell me how many records are older than or were last modified five years or more ago, and then basically we'll, we'll do some archiving strategy. So what we can do is we can search for records that are less than five years old. I mean, sorry, greater than five years old. Um, and we'll compare it with today. Um, and we'll just, just so we can actually see that we're getting information. Okay. All right. Now we can see that basically, yep, it's 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 working correctly. Okay, it has a, a index scan, but that's probably because there is something there's a modified uh, date modified is something that's not being covered. But at the time, I, we've done the index uh, scenario. I would like to maybe show you something that um, basically it's something that maybe you'll start picking up in future. 
So one of the things we have to be very careful with when we actually start writing some SQL is when you are using your WHERE clauses or your SELECT clauses, quite often what happens is you have to be very careful with the functions that you run in this. So in the case where maybe you want to uppercase names or something like that, then yes, you would probably need to have it on every single record because you must remember everything that you put in the SELECT statement or the WHERE statement is going to get checked on every single row that is returned. Um, so in this case, I'm doing a let's get five years back and get me the date. But what's happening is I'm going through this entire person record table and evaluating five years ago against every single row. So maybe what we want to say is let's um, maybe do that calculation beforehand. Uh, let's go at five years ago. Uh, time equals, maybe we'll grab this guy. And what I want to do is take this query, and instead of using the function, I want to use the pre the, the value that we've just calculated. What we can do is just run that query again, so we both get the same results. That's a good start. Now run the execution plan. What's really nice here is it actually then starts telling us if you looked at the top query, which is the first query it runs, it says if I had to look at these two queries as a batch. That one was 58% uh, of the query cost versus 42 of this, which means just a very, very small change that I did, again, has just done that little bit of a performance increase um, on this query. And this is the one thing that I find is, is the best way for actually starting to test, you know, if you want to actually change something and how bad of a, of a, of a procedure or a function are you actually, um, are, you know, are you changing it correctly or um, have, you, uh, have you found a little gold mine? Um, I think um, that's that's basically uh, a really really good uh, really good uh, demo for the uh, for using the query analyzer. Like I say, it's 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 a good way for for checking that actually your changes work because it's too easy to just say, oh, I'm sure this will work. And guess what? When you execute it, um, it happens sometimes. You know, you can look at it and, and you might make the you know the best guess decision. Um, and when you execute it in here, you find out that actually no, you were wrong. It's 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 not the best. It's not the best solution. Uh, so like I say, it's a really really good way for doing pre and post tests. Okay, all right, let's um, just move back into, uh, into the presentation. Okay, um, I'll touch base on the dynamic management views now. They're called DMVs. Um, I think for some of us, there's probably a good chance that you've seen these, but maybe you didn't know that they were actually called uh, DMVs. Um, Quite often, if you've ever had a performance issue and you've done a SQL, uh, you've done a search on the internet looking for something, you most likely would have come up with one of these uh, SQL statements with the sysdm table uh, views that basically exist. Now, these were written by Microsoft. Um, they are there and they're available for us to use, um, and basically they are extremely useful um, for uh, building up the stats. Um, that occur in a database. Um, they check what the queries that are running. Um, they build up the statistics in the background. Um, they do get refreshed every single time a SQL server is rebooted, so you should take that into consideration. Um, but they're, they're really good for querying um, and having a look to see basically what is actually going on in the background. And it's not just for looking for um, missing indexes or index statistics. You can you you can look for you know which which, which of my indexes are most fragmented. Um, again, this, I mean, you, may, you you must know that. Uh, on your hard drive, if it's fragmented, I mean, the performance of that hard drive is actually slow. And the same thing applies to an index. Um, and this is where a lot of these queries can be used uh, for maintenance. Um, not just saying, okay, well, we have a performance issue now and we need to look into it. You can use these and be actually slightly more proactive. Um, so maybe in one of your next uh, maintenance periods, you can actually then you know, take, a, take a stab at some of these uh, DMVs and um, start having a look and see how, how, how is your database health. Um, I, I will say that um, uh, I, I did mention it earlier when we were we were looking through uh, the auto uh, query analyzer. Is that you know it's it's a word, uh, word of caution is when applying indexes blindly. Um, like I say, SQL will try its very best to give you um, more performance, um, but you know you've got to take it with a pinch of salt and make sure that you know you do check that um, it is it is the right approach to that table, um, or do you have covering indexes or indexes that maybe need to be updated. Um, as far as the DMVs go, uh, like I said, these are very. I've just done very, very simple examples to show you that these are actually some available view, SQL views that you can actually query. Um, 
but you can make it a lot more complex. You can join the views, aggregate the data, and, and start building a bigger view that will actually guide you in finding problems. Um, but I'm going to be honest and say, you know, don't waste your time. Don't reinvent the wheel. Um, there are many people out there who have already done this. Um, if you literally go to Google and you search for uh, longest, ru longest running queries, um, there is a very good chance that within the first two clicks, you are going to find somebody who's written probably a query that, you know, it, it, it fulfills everything that you're looking for and more. So um, I would take that approach. Rather rather, rather start with, a, with an internet search rather than, um, you know, having a stab at this yourself. Um, the Database Tuning Advisor. Um, this is also built by, uh, built by Microsoft. You can see a trend here. Um, these are... <clears throat> These are these are these builds recommendations over time. Um, they're also built off the statistics that the SQL optimizer uh, creates in the background for us, um, and basically it it gives us recommendations. Um, so it gives us ideas about maybe what tables are being scanned the most. I mean, it may not be super critical to your system, but it's just something that you know maybe you should take a look at um, because you know eventually if it is scanning that table, it it will some, at some point become a problem. But I mean. If you, if you start looking at which are my worst scan tables and start working backwards from there, um, it, it's just going to put your database into that healthy state that you're, you know, you're looking for. Um, most of these are, um, the, the tuning advisor is built on a GUI, but basically in the background it is actually using the DMVs to actually just put it all together for you nicely. Um, I do have a little bit of a downside for this one, um, as there is no demo for it because it is actually not available for SQL Express. It is only part of a SQL Server. Um, as far as it goes, also for Azure, it's also not available on Azure databases. But however, if you do log into the Azure portal, um, there is a separate performance recommendation tab where you can go in and get this information if you're looking for it. Um, yeah. All right. As far as um, as wrapping up goes, um, I will say that I mean we did touch we did touch on this very lightly. Um, uh, it's more just to give give an overview, um, give you a little bit of insight um, into the approach that needs to be taken to this. Um, it, is a, it is a big learning curve. Um, there is a lot that probably I haven't covered. I mean, you could probably deep dive into this, uh, into this topic um, for DBAs or BI, uh, BI people, um, but maybe that's something for another time. Um, because one of the things is, it, it does take a lot of patience. Like I say, you can try lots of things on your queries. You can have, you can open a query and say, oh, I can see the problem with this, and you can try something. And when you use SQL Query Analyze it, like I say, you see it actually didn't work. It actually made the query worse. So there's there's never a one solution fits all. You've, you've actually got to, it's a trial and error sometimes. Um, but in most cases, you can probably pick up trends and you can start seeing how it's been set up and you'll be able to fix it yourself. Um, it's, it's just one of these things that, you know, the more, the more time you spend on it, the better you're going to get. Um, and uh, over time, it will just, it'll just become a lot easier for you. Um, as far as uh, video material goes, I've got to say there is, there is plenty online. Um, YouTube has got a massive amount of videos. Um, if you've got licensing or maybe a trial version, there's also LinkedIn Learning or Pluralsight. Um, those are also, they've got some great resources that you can make use of. Um, and then also, you know, apart from peer programming, I also find that's worked really, really well. Um, there's nothing like sitting with one of your colleagues um, with this problem and trying to, to find the improvements that you're looking for. Um, and again, also, if you don't get there, there's always, there's always online information with a Google search. And I could probably tell you it will end up with a, a link to Stack Overflow or probably SQL Server Central. Um, and uh, there's also, also the Microsoft MSDN, which is, which is really good as well. Um, I think, uh, yeah, that um, that brings us to the end. Um, I'm not sure if there's there's any more questions that you've you've been been thinking about uh, along the way. Um, I shall be around for a little bit if you if you would uh, like to ask me some more questions. I was actually, um, not related to a question, but I was actually talking to one of my colleagues the other day, um, and um, one of the common things that comes with actually doing SQL tuning and performance is um, a number of people actually will ask you to say, um, should you, um, 
should you proactively do this? Um, and isn't it a DBA's responsibility? You know, they look after the databases. Um, let's start with the proactively bit. I believe yes. Um, I I've always thought that you know when when you get to the quiet period of the year when you when you you try to do some maintenance. Um, you know, we mostly focus on the the code side of it. So maybe we update some frameworks or. We've seen some new packages that come in, and we do the updates there. Um, and little time or effort is actually spent on the database. Where, where like I say, if you've actually, um, if you just spend a little bit of time doing a Google search, you most likely will start building up your own little um, your history of SQL scripts um, that you can actually run to say, okay, let me just go and have a look and see what are my worst performing stored procs, or what are my worst tables, or where am I missing indexes? Um, it doesn't take a lot of time to actually go through that. Um, and like I say, I think it should, I think it should be, you know, a common task that actually it's it's built into Teams. Um, uh, as far as it goes for um, this becoming a DBA responsibility, um, partly yes. I mean, yes, they can run some health checks and they can have a look at your database and say, listen, um, you know, on the server, we're noticing that, you know, you are actually the noisy neighbor and it's because of reason X, Y, and Z. Um, but at the end of the day, I also feel that, you know, seeing as though we're quite often writing the code and we're doing the schema design, um, I do feel that, you know, we, we should also uh, take on, uh, take on that, uh, that responsibility. And at the end of the day, it actually just builds on your skill set as well. So I, I think it's something that's good. Okay, so what's the, I've got some questions. What's the biggest mistake you made in an optimization? Um, I think the biggest mistake is um, is actually is, is changing indexes. And um, I actually had did have an, uh, an issue where um, SQL over time actually got confused with uh, building the, uh, the cache plans in the background. Um, and the cache plan is basically built on saying, which indexes should I use and how am I going to get to the data? Um, and inadvertently, I went and changed one of the indexes. The plan was updated. And unfortunately, the good majority of the, um, the SQL queries that actually wanted to use that cache plan uh, no longer used it, which meant that cache plan actually became stale. Um, Fortunately, there was a way to resolve it. Um, there, there are some scripts that you can use to purge plans, um, and uh, that that actually just uh, that resolved the issue of actually just purging that plan. And basically, then the new SQL plan was actually created. SQL went, oh, here it is. Let's cache it, and then all the queries then just started working again. But for a for a brief period of time, there was a, a little bit of a, a little bit of slow response. Um, when you compare the two queries, the ones with date. Doesn't the cache make all queries after the first one a bit faster? Um, yes, it is true. Um, but what we can do is, uh, if we want to, we can actually just go back and actually just run that query a couple times. Because yes, you are right. Um, when you do write a query, um, like I say, it will be cached and uh, and it can improve. So just give me a second. Um, if we go back, let's just let's give it a couple runs. If we go back to the cache plan, uh, sorry, the execution plan, we'll actually notice that the percentages are actually still sitting the same. So even though, yes, it may have done some caching, it may have done some optimizations in the background, it actually is still looking at saying, you are running this function on every single record that is coming back from this person table, um, whereas here, you are doing the evaluation once and just applying that result. It's not actually doing a calculation against every row. So it's only just doing the comparison portion. Is there a maximum recommended number of indexes on one table? That is a good question. Um, there are articles that go into this. Um, there, there are ratios that they believe. Um, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, to be honest. But basically, um, when you do have large tables, talking large number of columns, that's a large number of tables, large number of columns, then yes, you don't want to have broad stroke indexes because remember, when you're wanting to update them, you don't want to go and update the entire index, especially if it's you know, if it's covering index where you want to have first name, last name. Then yes, you'd probably want to have that as one index and maybe separate indexes for ID or for some foreign keys. Um, but as far as it goes, um, I mean, you may have a table that has just foreign keys in it, so maybe it's one of those joining tables, um, and you would probably maybe want to just have indexes across maybe single columns or maybe it depends on the queries. 
Um, like I said, there 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 is some there may be some reading online um, that you could do. Um, I know I know there is like a ratio that that people say you should aim for. Um, again, they do say less is better. Um, so if you can reduce the number of indexes, then that's that's the approach that you should try and take. Give it another couple of minutes just in case any more questions come in. But uh, there's no more questions come in. I just want to thank you all for uh, spending your Thursday evenings with me. And um, yeah, hope you hope you learned something and you can apply something at your at your work. Do I use extended events? Uh, again, are, are you, I'm not sure if you're meaning extended events when we were doing the SQL profiler with um, adding additional events to um, to the to the to the profile. Um, if so, not really. Um, if 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 that actually is what you're talking about, those events, then no. Um, I find that the yeah the events that are already there are basically you're looking for for the stored proc execution or the the, the SQL the T SQL um, executions the actual queries that maybe somebody's running because um, on profiles sometimes you'll pick up that yeah you know, system went slow um, and when you look in the profile it's uh, somebody probably sitting on the floor maybe who shouldn't have access or shouldn't be running something manually um, and that's it can be picked up like that. Okay, all right. I think uh, we'll call it today there. Again, uh, I just want to thank you all for for joining in on the presentation, um, and I, I wish you well on uh, tuning your databases. Have a good one, guys. Stay safe. Bye.